So I've got 55 PSI in the front. All right, well, okay, hold on. Skirt. Let me back up. Hi, we're here. <laughs> we made it. Couldn't already tell. Um, so yeah, this morning, uh, I looked like a monkey fucking a football. And I had way too much front grip. And the car is very slippery at near lock. So if I'm not careful, I run out of steering angle to catch myself and it becomes a mess. I've reduced some of the front grip. I was at like 35 PSI before. That was a big no-no. So I, I pumped it up to 55, 55 PSI uh, and dropped the rears down to 22. So I'm hoping I can get some uh, side bite just to make it more manageable at lock. I did not do an angle kit or any of that fancy boy stuff. Um, it's all, it's all uh, standard stuff. He's let me go. Okay, so yeah, so hopefully, um, you know, we can get some progress here. I, I mean, I'm just stoked that the car is here. The car is complete. It was a mad dash. I hope that that translates through on the video. It was a mad dash. This is my 20 something, thir uh, 13, I guess. It's my 2013 FRS, drift car. I had alluded to this in a previous video when I was drifting my wife's car at uh, Thompson, my first day ever uh, drifting. This car has been in the works for a, little bit of, for a little while. I picked up the shell as a flood car in Louisiana and uh, it came with no motor, but it did come with a transmission and a drive shaft and a diff. And we like K-Series a lot. So we had a lot of K-Series sitting around and I put together a little K-Series for it. So this is a K20 head uh, from an 06 to 2011 Civic Si, so K20Z3 on a K24A bottom end. 10.8 um, to one compression-ish, 11 maybe. Yeah, just ARP 2000 head studs, OEM head gasket, stock cams, stock valves, stock, stock. It's just a stock K24, K20. It'll be a pump gas motor, maybe 235 horsepower at the wheels, I don't care. But yeah, so I really like the K-Series and uh, we've done a ton of rear-wheel drive swaps in uh, Miatas and RX-8s and E30s and S2000s and that sort of thing. But I hadn't done one of these yet, and there are a number of manufacturers out there that make swap parts for these things. I like to pick and choose certain things from certain people because I've done a lot of the rear-wheel drive swaps, and I figured out all of the shortcomings from all the kits, and they all got some. You know, they make a lot of nice parts out there, but not all of them are Great, so I pick and choose some stuff. Uh, some of it has to do with time. This is my car, so uh, I don't care about it really at all as it doesn't make me any money. So I have to minimize time and uh, maximize outcome with working a couple hours a week on Wednesdays in order to get this stuff done. Yeah, basically the K24, K20 combo I had sitting around. I'm a parts hoarder, had some cool little billet bits to put on there just to dress it up a little bit. This is skunk to billet front cover. I've got the Skunk 2 magnesium valve cover as well, but that's out getting powder coated, so I've just got a temp valve cover on there. K-Power rear wheel drive intake manifold that uh, we also bought. I'm using a drive-by-wire with this car, the OEM drive-by-wire, so I did buy the adapter uh, piece for the throttle body from K-Power as well. The uh, K-Power Industries oil pan is what I bought for this car as well. I was gonna build my own, but honestly, time versus cost, the K-Power one, is great. We've used the Toge Factory one in the past and they starve for oil really bad. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to deal with those problems. So I got the K-Power one, uh, K-Power header as well. The eventual plan is that this car will be turbo. So I didn't want to spend a ton of time or a ton of money on building a custom header for this thing. So again, just bought a K-Power deal because it's relatively cheap and you know, I only have to cut it a little bit to make it fit, which is good. And so then the mounts are Collins actually. So my buddy Brett owns Collins adapters and he had done a 3D scan on this engine bay some time ago and created this mount bracket system to get the motor as low and as far back as possible. I've actually moved the motor forward slightly to accommodate the uh, K-Power oil pan, which is fine because 
it's still, even with a factory valve cover, it's still low enough to clear the hood without issue, even with their hand. So I didn't, I didn't really care. I wanted to have a little bit of room to have heater core hoses, potentially, if I ever want to run heat for defrost. Not that I'll ever street drive this car or drive in the winter. I just, I don't like foggy windows. That's all. On this, I utilized uh, Rob at Track Tough made, they call the Max Clearance Kit. So you made a uh, water neck sort of reroute. So you can use the RBC, RBB style cylinder heads, which would normally have a rear coolant outlet, and you can reroute the coolant through the unused fresh air EGR port. So now you have two ports working in this max clearance side outlet on an RBB, and uh, it's more than enough flow. We used it in the E30 K24 project car that we built, and it was fantastic. So that required cutting and trimming the uh, K-Power intake manifold. I think you can buy them pre-cut and trimmed or whatever, but I normally we just buy the K24 full length ones so that we can have the option to cut them if we, you know, whatever. So we buy them in bulk that way. Yeah, so the Collins adapter kit is the uh, transmission adapter plate. Comes with a flywheel and a clutch. Comes with the clutch slave cylinder adapter plate. Comes with the mount brackets. Yeah, that's, that's basically it. So it comes with that. He has the option for a drive shaft and stuff like that, but I knew I was gonna be moving the motor around, so I wanted to make sure that uh, I just build a custom drive shaft for this thing when the time comes. So the kit is super nice. It comes with all the hardware and it's super fairly priced. I think it was like two grand or something like that. I don't know. I didn't get any deals on it or anything like that. But so then the only mod that I made to that kit was I sourced my own offset motor mounts from like a, 68 Dodge Dart or something, in order to get the motor down and forward. But yeah, that's about it. So it's an OEM trans. Oh, the Collins kit also comes with the uh, transmission mount bracket. So they go up in the tunnel, you take your factory mount for your transmission out, you put the brackets up in there, drill some holes, and it clamps in. It's fantastic. And by doing so in the future, if I wanna go CDO09, since I've already removed the mount bracket, then it just clears with no problem. Fuel system will be ID 1050s, injector dynamics, which typically I use those injectors on everything, whether it's a stock motor or you know a couple of hundred horsepower or turbo up to 500 wheel or something like that. Uh, we use 1050s just because they're super consistent, they're relatively reasonably priced, dead times are all posted and all that information is there. The sport is fantastic, so we really like them. With this, I'll be using a Haltech Elite 1500 keeping the drive-by-wire, as I said before. So it's an OEM pedal, OEM throttle body from the FRS, and doing a Haltech IC7 dash um, with a Mako Motorsports dash adapter, which I've, uh, I think I've shared that that's typically what we do. IC7 dash, Mako Motorsports dash ad adapter. It's just a match made in heaven. As far as wiring, the wiring harness was is complete from wiring specialties. So they make a really sick wiring setup for these cars. They have seen some other folks using that wiring setup as well, but it's fantastic. For mine, I added a couple extra things. A oil pressure temp, water pressure temp, fuel pressure temp. I also have, or maybe it was fuel pressure, and then ethanol blend, which, but in the content sensor, there is a temp gauge, so I think it ports in that way, but I have fuel temp. It comes with their CAN adapter, so actually if this car, even though most of that stuff will be bypassed or disabled, um, if this car was a, whether it's a turnkey or a push button car for start, their harness fully integrates, everything works, ABS works, electric power steering works, it's all full can adapted. It's fantastic. And for the price, like, you can't beat it. They helped me out on that, which is fantastic. So I appreciate that. Thanks guys at Wiring Specialties. I'm gonna do sort of a breakdown on how that installs and, and where everything is routed and stuff like that, kind of a, this is how you should install it sort of situation. But for the price point, for what you get and what you can add, there's nobody doing it for that much integration for that price, period. So uh, the wiring specialties harness is fantastic. As far as radiator, I'm doing a kind of a custom setup as well. I wanted all the hoses to be on the cold side of the motor. That's a big thing with me. Um, I don't like having hoses going around the hot parts, even though there's no shortage of cars out there that are running that, I don't like that. So that was part of the whole max clearance kit from Track Tough and getting the water neck on this side and having everything on the cold side of the engine, just like factory. Uh, I'm actually modifying up a set of S2000 radiator hoses and stuff. The nice part is, is they're like this long, so you can like chop them down to what you need. And I'm doing a full core radiator that's dual pass, 
So both hose inlet and outlet are on this side. So there's no more cooling hoses or anything running on the hot side. Doesn't matter if I'm turbo or whatever. I don't have to worry about uh, heat issues or anything like that. I just like the way that this is packaged. That's how I do it when I do it. Whatever, fight me. Chassis mount shifter. Uh, so the pivot is on the chassis. It doesn't require the support pedestal for the transmission anymore. You just make a custom length uh, shift rod and bolts right up, easy peasy. Lucky for me, although I'm not, you know, TN's fine, I guess. They're just soft usually, but the car came with these. So that's what I'm gonna run for now. I don't care. So, <laughs> typical FRS with broken studs. It just seems like the FRSs and like the modern WRXs are constantly breaking studs. I got the car this way. So I'm gonna switch from an M12 by 1.25 stud to an M12 by 1.5 stud. They're available from ARP uh, 200-7718, I think is the part number, whatever. Gonna switch out to those, leaving it five by 100 for now. I did get a set of 18 inch something or others, Anki. I was really into them. You can tell. But either way, so it was 18 inch somethings. We'll, we'll look at those later. At some point, you'll see them. I don't know. So my birthday's coming up and there happens to be one of the last uh, Lock City events on my birthday. So I'm trying to get this car ready in, what's today? What's today? The eighth? Woof. Yeah. At the time of filming this, I'm currently trying to get this thing running and driving and ready for an event on my birthday in 10 days. Boy, that's ambitious. But um, I'm trying to get this car together in 10 days to go drifting. It doesn't have to be great, it just has to work. That's it. I better get to work. <laughs> so. specialties K swap into FRS with functional can and all the fixins. Okay, so terminated for Haltech Elite 1500. We have a bunch of extra add on stuff here. We've got uh, the can interface, both of them. We've got the CAN bus diag port for uh, that's a blinky. Haltech intake air temp. Okay, so the guys at, at uh, Wiring Specialties hooked this up. This is integrating Haltech Elite 1500, Haltech Wideband WB1, ethanol content sensor from Continental or, or Haltech. It's all integrated into the harness. So this is actually, this is a pretty sick setup. So I've got uh, water pressure temps. I have oil pressure temp using the Bosch uh, dual sensors. So it's a Bosch dual sensor setup. You have uh, oil pressure temp, water pressure temp, fuel pressure temp. Terminated to the early gen K-series coils. The later models had smaller plugs, but most people use the early gens. Ethanol content, this is alternator. We've got NOx sensor for OEM K-series. Uh, I had them terminate the injectors already to a Bosch EV14 style, EV16, EV14. So directly pinned for injector dynamics IDs. So 1050s. 1750s, 1300s. I've got drive-by wire integrated in. This is the factory FRS drive-by wire. VTC, this is cam angle. Also, so I've got fuel pressure here. I have fuel temp in the ethanol blend sensor. Boost solenoid for when I go boosties. So the boys already hooked it up with that. But yeah, oil pressure temp, a lot of pressure temps already in there. So this is basically every sensor you're ever gonna want. There are some add-ons and things that you could do later via a sub harness or something like that, but basically every bit of information you could possibly want to get into uh, the ECU 
comes in one harness. I think this thing's like less than 1500 bucks. They're fantastic. It comes with the can modules. Now you do have to make sure to select whether you have a, a turnkey or a push button style can, but this interface is the factory FRS can, so everything works. They also did can breakouts for my can Lambda and my IC7 digital gauge cluster. So I'll be able to plug directly into the main loom. It's extremely straightforward. We're gonna do like a brief uh, install here or a, a loose fit. But yeah, this is, <clears throat> these are some auxiliaries and things like that, five volts, et cetera. So yeah, I think what's gonna happen is we're gonna end up putting it through the, the length here is long enough to put it through the, the original uh, main loom connector. We'll get this thing fit up and do some detail shots. So we're starting, we're looming. solenoid out here, which I'm not going to use quite yet. Our VTEC solenoid. We got our Bosch pressure temp, which is going to come right off of the oil sandwich plate. So we'll have our Bosch pressure temp right there. We've got our VTC. Gonna go like day. Then what else we got? This is all of the injectors and what have you. So that's going to go like that. Got the exhaust cam, we've got the intake cam, and we've got our wideband. Nice. I was like, Earl, can you just give me some distance down on that? So this will go down the trans and plug directly in. So this is the wideband connector built into the loom. So it comes out of the can lambda in the car and then goes out to the sensor directly. So I don't need to run any sort of separate stuff. It all goes through, passes through the firewall in the same location, which is super sick. I got this thing some time ago, so I'm like remembering how it was specced. Uh, at the same time, you guys are learning about it because I do not remember. Uh, this is ethanol content, which I said, yep, I want it on the cold side for the return. I love these guys. This is, what is this? This is ground. So that's gonna go around here like this. Probably to the center of the intake manifold, something like there. And then this is wideband. That's gonna go down below and probably go down the trans tunnel with the reverse light switch. Water temp also. And this is my reversey. And that goes down there as well. So this will basically go where the factory harness was. Now there's a bunch of stuff with the factory harness. In this case, I'm not, I'm probably not gonna get around to removing that sort of stuff just because I'm on such a time constraint, but you can remove, I mean, a humongous bulk of stuff. That goes through the firewall. This is wideband and reverse lights. That'll go down, terminate that stuff later. All right, so it's a loose fit of the coils over behind the motor. Then we've got our fuel stuff. This is gonna be fuel pressure. That'll go over by the ethanol content. This is gonna go underneath. Injectors are gonna go up over the top. So that'll actually come down like that. We've got, and then you'll notice like everything is labeled. It's just super easy. And there, it does come with a wiring schematic too. So if you like need to chop in or make, oh, you know what? If I wanna be super cool guy, you come up through the bottom. Yo, cool guy, here we go. Now, I sort of spec like generic lengths on some things. You know, it's a not a super common combo, or I guess it could be, but there's so many different ways that you could do this that I was like, yeah, it's just gonna sort of be like this and, you know, put it together based on these lengths or whatever. So there may be some things that I have to modify or something like that, but man, this is looking like really close actually. And this was like generic, hey, do this. And they're like, oh yeah, it's like basically bang on. Alternator, man, yeah, this stuff is like right on the money, dude. Sick. That is map sensor. 
and I did tell them that I was going to use the external map. The nice thing, the thing about this is in the future, if I want to go big boost and have a five bar or something like that, I have everything I need here. I have signal ground, I have power, and then I have the actual signal wire itself. So I don't necessarily need, to, I have it terminated to an OEM style map sensor, Gen 2, but I could terminate this to any external map or Honda at a four bar or whatever and we're good. The alternator plug, there's a couple of different generations of uh, connector and I can't remember what I had told them I had at the time. Cause I lied, I didn't have it at the time. I was like, I think I'm gonna use this. I'm not really fully clicking them in yet because connectors have service limits. You know, you're really only supposed to on off, on off, on off a few, you know, a certain amount of times and they're expected life degradation. This is with OEMs, with anything. So if I don't have to click them on yet, I won't. This is my intake or temp sensor that I can place either directly in the manifold or into the intake tube or whatever. Um, that'll be future proof. So, and I, I really like the Deutsch DTM two pins. Uh, Haltech makes a fantastic sensor for this that is threaded, eighth inch NPT, so you can put them anywhere. They're, they work under pressure as well, which is great. So I can, I've got adjustability there. So yeah, I mean, sheesh, that's basically it. I mean, I gotta feed my injector wires up through the manifold. I don't wanna quite do that yet because I have to pull the manifold off to finish the upper water neck. But yeah, this is super straightforward. So then this loom, you'll be going into the factory uh, grommet right here. And this loom will go on the inside of the car. This is your A and B plugs for Haltech. And this is CAN. And then this is the uh, latching interface connector for the interior wire harness. So the interior wire harness terminates to their CAN adapter box like this. Then you have your, uh, what is that called? This is if you have push button start, brake pedal, blah, blah, blah. So this converts between their aftermarket harness pinning like that and into the factory BCM or, or maybe the factory ECU. And this communicates into CAN or, or converts into CAN. But yeah, super straightforward. So then you pass that main connector through the firewall, get your loom settled on the inside, connect up your engine bay to chassis side wiring. That's a latcher. Done. And then you've got your uh, main EFI relay with fuse. These are connections for the can adapter. This is the other can adapter. And then uh, on this one, this is the uh, harness that will actually, I believe, comes back out uh, into the bay. And this interfaces your uh, starter signal wire and reverse light switch. And those tie in. So here on the factory, so see here is like, because normally these cars have a, a ECU in the bay. So these two connectors here are your trans, or excuse me, this connector over here. Um, starter and uh, transmission wiring. So yeah, that's it. We got some spares, auxiliaries or if we need to have some super fun stuff, uh, trimming switches, things like that. Now that Haltech has made the IC7 a smart device, you can actually reprogram some of those buttons in the dash. So the dash can actually become like a partial function uh, PDM. So we can activate certain things, maybe you know boost maps and uh, selectables and things via the buttons. So either way, so uh, the wiring specialties harness, Super easy. I mean, this was basically one take. I'm sure Sean's gonna, uh, you know, chop out all the um, 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 ums that I say, but we had this thing figured out generally where it's gonna run in, you know, yeah, 20 minutes. And I, I mean, I was probably farting around and dancing or whatever. So yeah, this, this is sick, man. And they really, they stepped up. So I, I called them and I'm like, you know, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. And I want to add a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I've known Brian and Earl for a long time. They've been fantastic. We use their stuff on customer cars all the time, especially when it's like they offer something and I can have it built off site incorporate the extras that I need to incorporate, and then I can get back to work in the shop. You know, we do build a lot of custom looms and things like that, but if there's a situation where, you know, it works for what they make, which is, I mean, basically everything, you know, we're utilizing them and it comes quick and it's super affordable. So yeah, fantastic stuff. Uh, I can't wait to get the thing fired up and uh, get the ECU mounted and stuff like that. So 
Thanks guys, appreciate it. And let's get back to work. Okay, I'm on to the filler neck. Uh, I've jumped ahead a bit, sorry I didn't record. So, all right. So, uh, <laughs> all right, let me turn. All right, so <clears throat> it started out as this piece, the billet section, and I had a water neck from something else that I bought from Robbie at Track Tough. Cut that off, welded it onto here, and then mocked up for my merge. It's hard to imagine, but imagine that the motor is like this, the tube comes out, and then I wanted the fill neck to be a little bit of a ways off from the fuel rail because eventually, although I'm doing returnless system right now, eventually the fuel rail will have a fuel pressure regulator on the back of it. So I didn't want to have this area like all filled with stuff. So I came down a little bit with the uh, merge for the filler neck. All this is is just going to be a filler neck. I'm still contemplating whether I want to put a high point uh, like a steam vent right there at the top, at the very top, but uh, I don't think it should be a huge deal. So anyway, so made a merge into that because it's really hard to cut on an axis. So notch this on the tube notcher on a piece of straight, cut it off, was able to actually clock how I wanted that to attach to this piece. And then I put the radiator cap receiver on there. That's all welded up. I had already marked out that height. So then uh, basically I gotta, once this cools down a little bit, cause I can't touch it. Then I'll get those two pieces merged together and you'll see the final product. I'm probably not gonna do a time lapse of welding. I don't know, maybe. So now hopefully you understand kind of what's going on. I tried to line up the uh, outlet for the overflow tank perpendicular to the head surface. So then that'll go off sort of around the strut tower area or whatever. There'll be a tank over there. Uh, the neck will go underneath the intake manifold and then I'll have this fill area. But like I said before, uh, right about here-ish, there will be a fuel pressure regulator eventually uh, if this car goes forced induction. So I just didn't want to shoot myself in the foot, <laughs> so to speak, not having room or not leaving room for the fuel pressure regulator. So I'll get this uh, coking cleaned up with some Scotch-Brite and then I'll get it installed and show you guys what it looks like. Hey, pretty slick. All right, so there it is installed. So it'll give me a place to fill and bleed the coolant from because I'm using a cross-flow radiator that does not have its own fill neck. So yeah. And that goes down in there. That's with the modded K-Power intake manifold in order to clear that extreme clearance uh, water outlet. So yeah. So that's how it'll sit in there. And then using those funnels or I like to vacuum fill everything. So I'll vacuum fill directly from this port. But then if I need to, you know, put a tank on there, those fill funnels usually have like a four inch extension. So then I'll put that up there and that'll be more than enough. But I don't foresee there being any bleeding issues, but yeah, so that solves the problem. And then when I do have the fuel pressure regulator here, that's gonna occupy sort of this space, I'm gonna have room uh, for it to be there. I like to use the direct mount uh, DMRs from Radium just because they're super compact and they're light and you can mount them directly.
So here's another reason why I like these cold crimps. I could take the assembly with me to the car. So I use, so I, you, I like this because you can take this over to the car, crimp it in place, and uh, you don't have to pull the cable back out. You know? In a tight spot, let's see this. Just a left-handed guy doing right-handed things. All right, so here's where we're at. The intake manifold is final installed. The fuel rail is final installed. The wire harness on the cold side of the motor is basically final install for, or as installed as I'm gonna do it for now. I'm gonna have fuel temp eventually through the ethanol sensor, so I'll have ethanol blend sensor, I'll have fuel pressure, and I have um, an extra for uh, boost control solenoid, which will be tied up, obviously it's not boosted right now. So that stuff's done. I think I'm gonna put some oil in it and test fire it here, and then um, I can continue on to like, cooling system and finishing that up. I, I wanted to get most of the things done that I can on the floor first, and then I'll get it up on the lift. I gotta finish the exhaust, the drive shaft, all that sort of stuff, but let's do it. <laughs> That's all crazy. You can hear it firing or trying to. The offset's all crazy. Okay, let's give this a shot. So here we are, the dyno. Uh, we've skipped forward a bit. So I was scrambling and I scrambled and that's it. So here it is, it's together. Interior is back together, uh, dash is in it. It is loosely programmed, base mapped at least to get me here. I'm gonna go through some of the boring bits and then we'll get to some power pulls. Just a quick background on this motor. It is a K20 Z3 head, bone stock out of an eighth gen Civic Si. Stock cams, stock valves, stock valve train, stock everything. K24A bottom end, RBB-2 is what it started as, which is like the uh, higher compression, uh, probably 10.8 to one, something like that. That is also stock, untouched. The only thing as part of the conversion kit, you have to take the balance shafted oil pump off of it. I am only revving this thing to 8,000 because I want it to live. ID1050 injectors, K-Power intake manifold, K-Power exhaust manifold. It's got a uh, Gretti Supreme SP exhaust on it. And that's because the exhaust that was on it was before would make your ears bleed. And I am not really a huge fan of loud exhausts anymore. So I put the quietest aftermarket exhaust I could on it. It's nice and quiet. It doesn't sound great, but it doesn't sound loud, which is the most important thing. But yeah, I'm gonna get to tuning and calibrating. Shawnee is gonna do some B-roll stuff and we'll do some uh, some power pulls here when I'm when I'm all set. But you know, I'm hoping for 225 or so wheel horsepower. You know, this is pump gas. So let's see how it goes.
dash. I hope that that translates through on the video. It was a mad dash. So, um, yeah, I finished it up. Uh, today's Saturday, so I finished it up Thursday on the dyno. Made 243 wheel horsepower, 190 foot pounds of torque, as you guys potentially saw. Um, and yeah, I mean, the thing absolutely rips. I'm like between second and third gear. I wish I had like a two and a half gear. Um, but unfortunately, it's just this is what I'm dealt with, so I gotta be just in VTEC off the limiter all the time, uh, which is fine. I mean, I, you know, ultimately, I just want the car to last for a long time. I don't have a lot of spare time that I give myself. I don't have spare time to be working on my own car. I don't have spare time to be using my own car. It's like the times that I wanna use it, it needs to work. So, um, so yeah, so I don't know. Let's just keep it together. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it just stays together. Woo.
yeah. I didn't think uh, we would make it, but we made it and the car worked. Uh, I didn't have to touch the laptop one time, which is a success. Uh, certainly figured out some of the shortcomings of this car in stock form. The OEM diff, as you can see, is pretty challenging. Uh, so I'll be putting a welded diff in there for now. I have another event on December 2nd that Brittany and I are gonna try to hit. But uh, I'll eventually do a two-way, like a clutch type LSD, set that up over the winter. Uh, but for now, I've got an IS300 diff uh, from one of my other projects, which we'll talk about at some point here over the winter, uh, that I'm gonna weld up quick and I'll swap that in. Um, hopefully that should help. Otherwise, car ran good, made good power. I didn't really do it justice because, um, you know, I suck, but, uh, but the car worked well. So uh, things that I noticed that I'm not a super fan of, the shifter is uh, not super good. So if I get into a situation where I'm trying to save the car or you know say i spun or whatever and i'm trying to get out of people's way or whatever and i'm i'm frantically gate chasing on on the shifter i get locked out a lot so i need to uh, adjust some things as far as the gate clearance for like a three to second you know third to second shift so i'll rectify that the the diff was a huge part of it the just in transition the car uh, when the diff unloads just wildly oversteers to the point where I don't have enough steering lock to catch it. I don't necessarily want to go with an angle kit quite yet. I just want to dial the car in factory angle to work the way that I need it to. So for now, a weld a diff and or, or, a, and or a, a plate type will do uh, just fine. The suspension's a bit soft. You know, that seems to be the case across the board with all teen suspension. They're, they just happen to be a hair on the soft side, which is super comfy for a street car, but this car not being a street car, I'm gonna ditch those probably pretty quick. I'll put a set of custom valve and custom sprung BCs in there. I'll work with the guys at BC to get something together uh, there. Otherwise, I mean, everything else, you know, really works. I definitely wanna put heat in the car. I didn't end up doing that. I started it and it was just totally futile and I was running out of time, so I ditched it but I uh, definitely wanna have some heat. The power steering surprisingly worked really, really well. The I'm pretty sure that the power steering control module in the column thinks that I'm going one consistent speed all the time, so the assist is consistent, it doesn't change. Um, so that worked surprisingly well. So, you know, Some people were like, oh, you're gonna have problems with that, and I know a lot of people convert to hydraulic racks and whatever, and uh, I just, I don't think at this performance level it's really required. Yeah, just diff and uh, changing the shifter or, or modifying the shifter a little bit to work better for me. And otherwise, it was fantastic. Really no complaints, just uh, just glad that it went together. Car made uh, you know really good power, as you saw, and uh, everything works as it should. So uh, big thanks to everybody who helped me out in terms of uh, either you know, product support or, you know, provided me some deals with some stuff in order to get things going. I don't have a ton of money, so it's, it's good to be able to get that help when I need it. The harness and everything worked flawlessly, you know, right out the gate, no issues. So I think that was a huge contributing factor to the fact that I didn't need to grab the laptop or tweak things or change things. I didn't have a single pedal fall. I didn't have, you know, any issues really crop up. Everything worked as it was supposed to work. So definitely a uh, big shout out to Wiring Specialties for that. And uh, if you're doing, if you're looking to do a swap like this, you know, consider using those guys because it's really a one and done solution. It just works. Uh, so uh, in this day and age, you can't really always say that. Uh, a lot of times you end up fiddling with things when you buy it, but that worked flawlessly. So I'm excited about that and uh, that's it. Goodbye.